My name is Nora Bustani. I'm an instructor at the Media Studies program at the American University of Beirut. I teach journalism. Uh, I have some 40 some years experience as a journalist in the field. I worked for about 30 years with the Washington Post, both in the Middle East and Washington. You know, funnily enough, when I first started um, in the mid-70s, uh, one of the jobs I was trying to apply to, I was told at the door, we don't hire women. But I ended up getting a job with United Press International and doing the night shift, uh, no less. And funnily enough, it was an advantage to be a woman. Uh, it was dangerous. It was dangerous for everybody at the time because it was right in the middle of the Lebanese Civil War. There was the Palestinian Liberation Organization we had to cover. There were attacks on South Lebanon, as there are now, and we had to deal with militias. But there was a bodicum of respect uh, for women journalists. So I didn't, I didn't have any trouble. Uh, you had to be twice as courageous as the men. You had to be twice as good and uh, not chicken out of assignments. As a woman, it's been, it's been great. The flip side is that it, it affect, when I was trying to prove myself, I didn't get to have a life. It was either you give it your all or not. Now it's a little bit easier. Now uh, editors and uh, executives in the media companies are a little more attuned to uh, women's needs. You know, newsrooms now are much more diverse. When I started out, I was the only Arab American woman I knew of, and I was an anomaly. You know, I'd step out of the newsroom and people say, how are people reacting to you? It was a challenge, it wasn't easy. Uh, and, uh, you know, my goal, my mission was to show them that I was just like everybody else. Um, and I get students now who ask me, what was it like for you as an Arab to work for a big American company? Uh, and I, I, I'm honest with them. There were challenges. There were questions about my um, identity, about my perspective. And eventually hard work prevailed. But now you, have, you see so many more Arab American names. There has been a very healthy shift in the conversation. I mean, you may on the same day um, in the New York Times, for example, read a story that's written from the perspective of American Jews being scared and feeling targeted. And on the same day, you will have a brilliant photo essay uh, written and shot by a Palestinian indigenous journalist and uh, her own personal perspective and what her family went through. And that's very healthy. That's, it shows uh, a growing maturity among editors to uh, not shift the conversation, but make it more inclusive, make it more representative of what's going on. And I think that drive is led not only by women editors who are more sensitive, uh, but also uh, by journalists themselves who are more aware, uh, better exposed to different points of view because of the digital age, and who sometimes tell their newspapers and their editors, hey, we didn't do this story right. I find that extremely refreshing and encouraging. But there are areas that are undercover, Sudan, Yemen, as people. Um, Syria probably, and <laughs> this is both uh, due to lack of access as well as lack of interest or sensitivity. Mm. 
journalists feel targeted. They always have been targeted, whether in Mexico, in Kashmir, in Pakistan, uh, uh, in Argentina, uh, in Turkey, and of course the Middle East. And what is really sad and distressing right now is that they're not only targeted and muzzled, they're targeted killings. And that is very, very worrisome. Um, and there has, you know, the world seems to have shifted to the right. There is a, a growing kind of impunity towards, uh, uh, when it comes to silencing voices that are critical of governments or certain currents or Hezbollah or Iran. And that has been going on for the last few years. And uh, we have to stand up and fight against that. I don't know how you get to stop it, but um, news organizations are very aware of that. They're pulling out their staff when they feel that they may be in danger. They take care of their families. So there is a commitment to protection. But what I haven't seen yet is a commitment to punishing governments uh, or uh, political groups that are going after journalists. It's a dangerous environment right now.